Welcome back to On Track GP. I'm Jamie Chambers, and this is our rundown of the head to head qualifying and race stats between teammates. The first rule of being a Formula One driver always beat your teammate, and the F1 2023 season is no exception to that. For every driver on the F1 2023 grid, their teammate is the only person that shares identical machinery, so naturally will be the best barometer for overall performance as the season progresses. With that in mind, here is how all the drivers stacked up head to head over the course of the F1 2023 season. Red Bull. In qualifying races and sprints throughout the season, Max Verstappen outperformed Sergio Perez in nearly every aspect. Verstappen dominated in qualifying 20-2 and mirrored this in race results, bettering Perez 20-2. He significantly led in Grand Prix wins 19-2, podium finishes 21-9 and points finishes 22-19. Moreover, in the sprint shootout, Verstappen bested Perez 5-1, winning four sprints compared to Perez's one. This translated comprehensively in sprint podiums 6-3. Verstappen's stellar performance culminated in clinching the championship title with an overwhelming 575 points, while Perez secured second place with 285 points. After a record-breaking season for Red Bull in 2022, Sergio Perez was determined to take the fight to Max Verstappen within the team and launch a title fight of his own. With the Red Bull RB19 being the dominant car in the field and Perez taking two wins in Saudi Arabia and Azerbaijan early on, he looks set to potentially mount a challenge. However, Verstappen's remarkable surge, starting from Miami with 10 consecutive wins, established an unbeatable and unassailable lead. Verstappen secured his third title in Qatar, while Perez clinched second in Las Vegas, marking Red Bull's historic achievement with both drivers in the top two for the first time. Our choice? Max Verstappen. Mercedes. In qualifying, Lewis Hamilton and George Russell reached a tie with 11 each. However, during the races, Hamilton outperformed Russell 15-6. Hamilton also dominated in podium finishes 6-2 and points finishes 2017. However, in the sprint shootout, Russell gained an edge with a 4-2 lead, translating into a similar outcome in the sprint result. Hamilton did secure more sprint podiums though. These performances culminated in Hamilton finishing third in the championship standings with a total of 234 points, while Russell secured eighth place, amassing 175 points throughout the season. The British drivers continue to be evenly matched over one lap throughout 2023, the only pairing to end up level in qualifying. But Hamilton established a clear advantage on race days to outscore Russell by 59 points in the end. Hamilton also picked up a record-breaking 104th pole position on his career in Hungary. On track GP's choice, Lewis Hamilton. Ferrari. Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz engaged in a closely contested battle. In qualifying sessions, Leclerc held a 15-7 advantage over Sainz, showing genuine prowess in securing better starting positions. This translated to race days, Leclerc edging ahead with a narrow 11-9 against Sainz. Science claimed a sole Grand Prix victory and secured two podium finishes while Leclerc achieved six podium finishes without a win. Although Science had more points finishes with 18 compared to Leclerc's 16, their sprint contest ended in a tie with both drivers bettering the other three times. Leclerc managed to grab two sprint podiums compared to Science one. These performances culminated in Leclerc finishing fifth in the championship standings with 206 points while Science closely followed in seventh place just six points behind on 200. Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz were relatively even matched in their first season together at Ferrari, Sainz scoring more points in 2021 before Leclerc hit back hard in 2022. They were very close once again in 2023, Leclerc scoring just six points more than Sainz over the course of 22 rounds, but Sainz having the distinction of being the only non-Red Bull driver to win a race in Singapore. Leclerc ended the year with five pole positions, including one he inherited following a Verstappen grid penalty at Spa, with Sainz taking two consecutively at Monza and Singapore after the summer break. On track GP's choice, Leclerc. McLaren. Lando Norris showcased a dominant performance against Oscar Piastri. In qualifying, Norris was superior 15-7 over Piastri. This trend continued into the races where Norris finished higher 17 times to Piastri's five, asserting himself on the track. Norris took more podium finishes 7-2, further solidifying his competitive edge. 
Norris also took more points finishes, tallying 16 compared to Piastri's 12. In sprint competitions, Norris continued outperforming Piastri 5-1 in the shootout and 4-2 in the sprint result. However, Piastri did secure a maiden sprint win and another podium, whereas Norris managed to claim two sprint podiums. Norris finished sixth in championship standings, amassing 205 points, while Piastri trailed in ninth place with a total of 97 points throughout the season. Despite still being early in his 20s, Lando Norris became the senior driver at McLaren in 2023, following the departure of Danny Ricciardo. In Ricciardo's place, Oscar Piastri, one of the most highly rated rookies to come to Formula One in recent years, after a year on the sidelines following back-to-back -back Formula Three and Formula Two titles, an achievement only matched by Russell and Leclerc. The two McLaren drivers settled into a solid partnership with Piastri more than holding his own against one of F1's most gifted drivers in Norris, notably outqualifying him at classic driver circuits Spa and Suzuka and winning the Qatar Sprint Race. Norris's greater experience showed in the end, however, as he outscored Piastri by 108 points. Our choice, Lando Norris. Aston Martin. Fernando Alonso showcased a truly dominant performance over Lance Stroll throughout the season. Alonso notably dominated in qualifying, outperforming Stroll 19-3. This superiority extended into the races where Alonso ended with a commanding 17-4 over Stroll. Impressively, Alonso completely outperformed Stroll in podium finishes, clinching eight compared to Stroll's none. Furthermore, Alonso secured more points finishes with 19 against Stroll's 12, emphasizing his consistency throughout the season. In the sprint, Alonso prevailed over Stroll in both the shootout 5-1 and the sprint result 4-2. Ultimately, this all secured Alonso fourth place in the championship standings, accumulating a total of 206 points, while Stroll finished 10th place with 74 points for the season. Eyebrows were raised when Fernando Alonso joined Aston Martin to replace Sebastian Vettel for the 2023 season. Not least because on the basis of 2022 performance, it seemed a step down compared to what he had left behind at Alpine. How wrong everyone proved to be. Another fascinating aspect to the move was how Lance Stroll would fare against Alonso after showing up a relatively well-rounded performance against four-time world champion in 2021-2022. In true Alonso fashion, however, he took the ball by the horns and led the way at Aston Martin, claiming six podium finishes in the first eight races and adding two more at Zandvoort and Interlagos in the second half of the season. Stroll ultimately finished 132 points behind his new teammate in arguably his most challenging season to date. On track GP's choice, Fernando Alonso. Alpine. Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly had a closely contested Formula 1 season with both drivers displaying competitive performances. Gasly qualified better than Ocon 14-8, however in the races Ocon narrowly edged ahead 10-9 over Gasly, showcasing slightly more consistency on race day. Both drivers managed one podium each throughout the season. Ocon secured 12 points finishes, slightly more than Gasly's 11. The sprint competitions were evenly matched with a tie in the shootout at three all, but Gasly emerged stronger in the sprint result with a 5-1 lead, also securing a sprint podium. In the championship standings, Gasly finished 11th with 62 points, while Ocon closely followed in 12th place, accumulating 58 points. Many expected this duel to be one of the fiercest on the grid when Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly were paired together at Alpine. However, having grown up less than an hour apart and risen through the ranks together, all the way from karting up to Formula 1, the two Frenchmen have formed a rivalry they hope will propel Alpine forward with the backing of their home nation behind them. Ocon had the experience of the team in his favour, having claimed his first F1 victory of Alpine in 2021, with Gasly joining at the beginning of 2023 as a fellow one-time Grand Prix winner. The pair ended up with one podium apiece, Ocon finishing third in Monaco before Gasly equaled that result at Zandvoort. On track GP's choice, Pierre Gasly, barely. Williams. Alex Albon demonstrated clear dominance over Logan Sargent throughout the season. In qualifying, Albon notably secured a perfect 22-0 record against Sargent. This superiority carried into the races where Albon bettered Sargent 18-3, showing surprise strength on race day. Albon also outperformed Sargent significantly in sprint competitions, prevailing in both the shootout and result with 6-0 record. 
Moreover, Albon secured seven points finishes compared to Sargent's lone point. Ultimately, Albon finished 13th in the championship standings, accumulating 27 points, while Sargent closed the season in 21st place with just one point to his name. Albon has firmly established himself as the team leader at Williams since his arrival in 2022, comfortably beating Logan Sargent this season. In an improving car, Albon completed the only qualifying whitewash of 2023 by outpacing Sargent over one lap in all 22 rounds, with a number of Q3 appearances along the way. He registered seven points finishes across the season, scoring all but one of Williams' 28 points as the team claimed their best result in the Constructors' Championship since 2017 with a seventh place. Sargent did score a point, but it only came as a result of Hamilton and Leclerc being disqualified from the United States Grand Prix. Despite the struggles, Williams have retained Sargent for 2024, so he should do much better in his sophomore year. On track GP's choice, Alex Albon. Alpha Tauri. Yuki Tsunoda faced three different teammates throughout the season, experiencing varied levels of competition and performance. Against Nick De Vries, Sonoda exhibited dominance with an 8-2 lead in both qualifying and race day, securing two points finishes and evenly splitting the splint contests. When facing Liam Lawson, Sonoda faced a competitor who outperformed him in qualifying and the sprint races, despite Sonoda winning the majority of their one-on-one -on -one race battles. Racing against Daniel Ricciardo proved to be a closely fought competition, with Sonoda narrowly edging Ricciardo 4-3 in both qualifying and race days. Sonoda also secured more points finishes. In the championship standings, Sonoda finished 14th with 17 points, Ricardo claimed 17th with 6 points, and De Vries finished 22nd without earning a single point. Yuki Sonoda had already convincingly beat one teammate during the F1 2023 season, so much so that it actually led to Red Bull intervening and terminating the contract with Nick De Vries after just 10 races at AlphaTauri, not even lasting until the summer break at the end of July. Sonoda had a new challenge in the form of Danny Ricardo, but a broken hand gives an opportunity to Liam Lawson. Lawson marked himself out as a future star in a five-race cameo before Ricardo returned to action in Austin. But Sonoda was impressive throughout as AlphaTauri's only constant competing driver, completing his strongest F1 season to date. On track GP's choice, Yuki Sonoda. Alfa Romeo. Valtteri Bottas outperformed Zhou Guan Yu over the course of the season. In qualifying sessions, Bottas took 15 compared to Zhou's 6. During the actual races, Bottas outperformed Zhou 12-9. In terms of GP points finishes, Bottas gained a slight lead with 4 points finishes compared to Zhou's 3. Their performance in sprint shootouts and results were evenly matched, each bettering the other 3 times. Consequently, in the overall championship standings, Bottas finished 15th with 10 points, while Zhou secured 18th place with 6 points. Despite Bottas generally leading in various aspects, Joe maintained a competitive challenge throughout the season, making for a compelling contest between the two drivers. After doing well enough in his rookie year to retain his seat at Alfa Romeo, Joe Guanyu stacked up solidly against the vast experience of Valtteri Bottas in F1 2023. Bottas was brought into Alfa Romeo to be team leader after the departure from Mercedes and has acted as a mentoring figure for Zhou since his arrival at China's first full-time F1 driver in 2022. Alfa Romeo's competitiveness fluctuated in 2023 season with the drivers limited to just seven points finishes between them in the whole season. On track GP's choice, Valtteri Bottas. Haas. Nico Hülkenberg showcased a stronger performance compared to Kevin Magnussen throughout the season. In qualifying sessions, Hülkenberg bettered Magnussen 15-7. Similarly, during the actual races, Hülkenberg maintained a higher finishing standard 13-9. In terms of points finishes, Magnussen managed to secure three points finishes, surpassing Hülkenberg's one point finish. However, Hülkenberg's single points finish was more than all three of Magnussen's combined. In sprint shootouts and results, Hülkenberg prevailed 4-2 over all sessions. In the overall championship standings, Hülkenberg concluded the season in 16th place with 9 points, while Magnussen finished 19th with 3 points. Despite differences in their standings, both drivers showcased competitive moments throughout the season. The Hulk's 2023 F1 returns showcased him outperforming teammate Kevin Magnussen comfortably in both races 
and qualifying battles. Their history, marked by a tense encounter in the 2017 Hungarian Grand Prix, didn't spark much drama as they surprisingly collaborated well as teammates. Hockenberg's return seemed effortless and the anticipated friction between him and Magnussen was notably absent. This suggested that there'll be a more, more cohesive partnership than expected in the future. A recurring theme with the Haas team is the new driver consistently outperforms the other regular driver. For example, Schumacher outperformed Mazepin in the 2021 season, but he was in turn outperformed by the returning Magnussen in 2022. Then in 2023, Magnussen was outperformed by new arrival Hülkenberg. So there you have it, our 2023 driver head-to-head -head review. The interesting battles at Mercedes, Ferrari and McLaren all began to develop throughout the 2023 F1 season. Lewis Hamilton and George Russell engaged in direct combat on a handful of occasions, while Charles Leclerc continues to do just enough to keep Carlos Sainz in his rear view mirror, even though the Spaniard was able to claim the accolade as the only non-Red Bull driver to win a Grand Prix in 2023. Oscar Piastri has announced himself well and truly at the top of the sport with his improvements over the course of the season. He claimed a sprint victory and did enough to ruffle Lando Norris's feathers in the latter part of the season. Do you agree with our choices for the best driver in each team? Which head-to-head -head do you think was best this season? Which team faces a struggle with their drivers next year? Which dream head-to-head -head would you like to see in the coming years? Let us know what you think in the comments and remember to like, comment, share and subscribe. This has been On Track GP. I've been Jamie Chambers. Keep the pedal to the metal and I'll catch you in the next video.